Hello and welcome to today's Saratech Enablement session. My name is Andrea Hall and I'm the Customer Relationship Manager here at Saratech and I will be your host today. Presenting, we have Daniel Rubio, who is an Applications Engineer at Saratech and he'll be talking to you about synchronous technology in Solid Edge. Our sessions run about 30 minutes each, and they are all recorded and posted on our Saratech YouTube channel. So make sure you check out our past sessions there. Twice a month, twice a month, we meet right here to learn about tips, tricks, new and old features that will help you in your everyday tasks. This is an open forum, so if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, Please type them in the chat box and I will kindly interrupt Dan and let him know about your comments or questions. And with that, I will pass the baton over to Dan. Thanks, Andrea. So like she said, my name is Daniel Rubio. I'm an application engineer with uh, Saratech. I've been here about seven years. I have bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from the University of Central Florida, the undefeated Knights out of Orlando. And I've mainly been focused on Solid Edge and FEMAP, but I also uh, support NXNAS, Trandy Solvers, uh, as well as NXCE, which has recently been rebranded to SimCenter 3D, as well as Motion. So for today's agenda, we'll talk about what is synchronous technology and the value that it can bring to you. Now, there's four main parts of synchronous technology in Solid Edge. There is the steering wheel, so we'll see when and how to use it. Then we'll talk about design intent, which is automatic intelligence that Solid Edge gives you. The third part is face relationship. So that's the ability to manually add design intent to control your models the way you want and need. And the fourth part of synchronous technology is dimensions. That's still the best way to control your models, but it's definitely a more modern way than uh, you may be used to. So what is synchronous technology? It's the capability, again, inside of Solid Edge and also NX, by the way, another uh, CAD program offered by Siemens. Uh, but it allows you as designers to design more efficiently, more intuitively, giving you freedom, uh, not only when just creating your initial designs, but making design changes. So when you get that emergency ECO, ECN, you have to make some rapid design changes with Synchronous, you can do that all very quickly. With whether it's, uh, it was designed uh, last week or 10 years ago. Synchronous uh, makes it extremely easy with the, uh, the built-in design intent recognition, uh, and all that gives you very logical and expected results. Uh, so you don't find yourself holding your breath uh, like in traditional history-based modeling approaches. Now, the one big thing to keep in mind here is synchronous technology is a design concept. It's a completely different way of uh, modeling. So to explain that a little bit better, let, let's first talk about history-based modeling or the traditional or AKA ordered approach. So with the history-based modeling that's been around for decades, uh, your models were dimension driven, right? You had your sketches, uh, you added your dimensions, your constraints, relationships and whatnot. So it was all highly automated. You know, there was a step-by-step -step process. You start building these parent-child relationships, right? All the features start you know, building on top of each other and, and everything is dependent on what came before it. So some of the problems with this approach is that it required a lot of pre-planning. So if you need to make changes, you know, down the road, uh, you better hope that, you know, the, the person who initially designed it had some, some good pre-planning skills when, when he initially designed it. It was somewhat inflexible, you know, making changes, you, you have to roll back your model, you know, make the change and then literally rebuild all the subsequent features uh, that came after that. What happens a lot of times is, you know, you hold your breath because it, it, it might break, you know, it might not rebuild correctly, as we'll see in some of the demos later. And another problem is that this design approach scales poorly on many featured parts. So, you know, the complexity of your parts, of course, uh, increase, you know, this just makes this lag, this, this rebuild, it makes it all that much more complicated. So what happened, uh, you know, after a few decades of that modeling approach, we saw a couple of direct modeling programs come about. One of the more popular ones was uh, is SpaceClaim. 
So what, what these types of, of programs brought were, you know, flexible editing. So being able to directly interact with your models, kind of this push and pull design approach. It scales uh, very well on many featured parts. And, and like I said, you interact directly with the model. So it's, it's more of a what you see is what you get. Some of the problems with this design approach is that it's uh, in, in a lot of programs, it's featureless. Uh, so you just have, uh, you know, blocks of geometry, basically, but you don't really have defined features like you're used to in the, in the traditional approach. The uh, dimension driven editing was uh, traditionally very weak and there's very little automation for your designs with this approach. So what Siemens did uh, roughly 10, 11, 12 years ago, uh, they brought about this synchronous technology which is the combination or the best of both worlds of these two different modeling approaches. You get the benefits of the traditional history-based approach where you, your models are dimension-driven, highly automated, feature-based uh, with the benefits of the direct modeling approach. So it's very flexible, it scales well, and you interact directly with your models. Not only that, you get additional power using this hybrid approach. So you get these uh, 3D driving dimensions or, or PMI, product manufacturing information, as we'll see later. You get design intent, which I briefly mentioned a minute ago. So that's the automatic design intent that Solid Edge gives you. Again, you work directly with your model. You can create face relationships. This is all very highly automated and flexible, and you still keep those features. Uh, so it's not history based, so you don't have you know, features that are dependent on what came before it, but you still have most of those features in, in your pathfinder or your, your, your design tree, your model tree. And a couple of things to keep in mind here is that this is all based off the Siemens owned parasolid uh, modeling kernels. That's what most of the CAD programs uh, are actually based off of. And this is exclusive Siemens synchronous technology given to you in Solid Edge as well as NX. So some of the values that synchronous technology brings you are again that rapid initial design. So just you know getting started with very simple blocks like you see here, that automatic design intent recognition, uh, being able to model very precisely, being able to reuse uh, 2D drawings and and also of course 3D models that even maybe came from other CAD programs. You can account for unexpected design changes very quickly. You can create what if scenarios, you know, create different uh, designs, make modifications. You can edit imported 3D data. So whether it's, you know, native, let's say SolidWorks, CATIA, Inventor, those types of programs, but also all the neutral formats. So your parasol, your steps, IGES, and so on. And a very powerful thing is that all these benefits translate to the assembly level as well, as we'll see in, in, in a demo later. So let's jump in and, and take a look at a very quick example here on how to get started. So let's say I have a, a blank model. If I run the line command, I have to a front view with control F and very quickly start creating a line. Now with the S keyboard shortcut, I can toggle a symmetric line, as you see here. And I'll just create a few uh, consecutive lines here to make a region. Now notice, uh, as soon as I close that sketch profile, it created this light blue region. That is the, the fundamental concept behind your sketches in synchronous technology. So if I rotate around, you can see this is, of course, uh, now sort of an ISO 3D view. If I click that region, I get sort of this simplified steering wheel, which I'll explain in a minute. In a minute. But here, it, it's basically a, a 2D plane, right? Just a profile or a region. But if I click any one of those white arrows, I am already in this dynamic extrude mode. A shift toggle symmetry, and, and I'm not going to bore you with you know all the other shortcuts and things like that, but just know that there are many shortcuts and tips and tricks that very um, that can improve your, your, your design speed tremendously. So as soon as I click to place that, notice I automatically got a dimension. So if I needed to change the width of this part, notice I get a call out. So this is, again, one of those four fundamental parts of synchronous 
And again, we, we will look at this in a little bit more detail later. At this point, if I wanted to make a, a change, let's say instead of this being perfectly vertical, notice I can click this face. Again, that arrow pops up, which is a simple calculation on the steering wheel. And I can push and pull it. I can actually move that steering wheel down, let's say, to the bottom axis and rotate that face. So notice it's telling, it's doing exactly what I'm telling it to. It's, it's rotating that face using that bottom edge as the axis. Now, if I wanted to move uh, the entire vertical portion of this L bracket, I can do a fence select. So once I fence select and move the steering wheel to the proper axis I want to rotate about, notice that entire part rotates uh, as one. So you can think of this sort of as creating a, a rigid set, actually, is what you can do with, with the relationships. So as you can see, it's very easy to, to get started with, with sketching and modeling and synchronous. Uh, again, sketches, you, you all, obviously, we're never going to get away from sketches. You need to start with something. But once you have that, that sketch, uh, you don't have to go dig into commands. You, you can just use those regions and start modeling off of that. All right, let's see uh, one more uh, demo here before we get back to the slides. So let's say there's a, a legacy 2D drawing that I have. Here we can see this could be a year old, could be 20 years old. Uh, this is a, a DWG drawing, for example, that may have come from AutoCAD. But you notice there's a Create 3D tool. So what I can do is, is choose the options for what I want to create, whether it's first or third angle uh, projection, and if I want to include the dimensions or not. Hey, Dan. So when, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but we do have a question from John. Um, he said, where, sure. uh, where is a keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet? So do we have a cheat sheet for the keyboard shortcuts and a cheat sheet with the steering wheel options? Great question. It's actually going to be, I believe, my next slide once I get to that. So let me um, get the, the keyboard short, shortcuts. I will show you uh, in a second once I get back into Solid Edge here. Awesome. Okay, so once I, I choose my, my template and, and my options, I can basically start fence selecting my views. Uh, press Next once I choose the first one and select the second one. And there's this handy set fold line option, which lets you ensure that the, the views are going to basically match up to each other. So I'll fence select my third view here, and again, set that fold line, and hit finish. Notice all of these, uh, these three views, as well as the dimensions, get taken into a, a, a part now. So real quick, before I forget uh, your the keyboard uh, shortcut question, if you right click anywhere in the ribbon bar and choose either the customize quick access toolbar or the customize the ribbon uh, options, you'll get the, uh, uh, the customize window here. Notice there's a keyboard tab. And here you can expand all these levels. And this is basically where you can see the, the list of all your keyboard shortcuts. Now, you know, if there's, it's, for example, going to view, uh, view orient. Here we'll see a lot of those keyboard shortcuts. So, for example, fit, I've actually set this to control A to fit uh, the model to the window. But you can see any keyboard shortcuts that already exist, you'll see them populated there. All right, and, and uh, for the second part of the question on, on, this, on the steering wheel, I, I will show that in, in a minute. Okay, so going back to this uh, demo, again, remember I mentioned that in synchronous, your, your extrusions, your parts are based off of these sketch regions. So what I can do with these, these sketches that I've imported is basically start selecting those regions. Of course, I can do fan selections to, to make all this uh, a little bit quicker. I can use the space bar to toggle my selection mode so I can remove the holes, for example. And once you've uh, correctly selected your regions, again, we use the arrows to start extruding. So we don't have to go digging into commands. But the nice thing about this tool is I can use the other views for my, my depth. So I can choose on, on any of these key points, for example, 
uh, to to define the 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 length or, or the or the depth of that flange here. Now I can uh, continue and select uh, additional regions. Here I will rotate a little bit so I can simply use a fence selection and grab all of those uh, regions there. And again, I'll simply remove the uh, four regions of the hole. And here, once I start extruding, notice it's trying to remove material. So because that re those regions were on that back face, it's smart enough to know that if I'm pulling it this way, it's going to cut material. If I come to the left, it's going to add material. Or if I go all the way through, it'll remove completely. But I can always control if it's adding or removing using space or the uh, the up down here in the command bar also lets you change that. So I can add material and again use the key points on the other views to define that extent. And as I start doing this, let me turn on uh, dimensions. Notice all those brown dimensions are starting to become blue. So blue dimensions, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, are these are actual live driving dimensions that I can use to control my model. So if I click this 1.784, again, I can start modifying that. Uh, I'll turn dimensions back off just to quickly wrap, uh, wrap this demo up here. So I'll fence select these four holes from the top view. And again, I click the white arrow. And of course, it's trying to add material since there's nothing there. But once I go all the way through, I can hit space as a shortcut to remove material and very quickly create those four holes. And the last thing uh, just for this model would be to create some rounds. So I can see there's some rounds going around uh, the, the top center and bottom here. Maybe also the front and so on. So it, again, this was just a quick demo just to show you how you can not only get started uh, with very basic um, models from scratch, like I showed in the first demo, but also being able to reuse legacy 2D drawings as well. If I turn off those sketches, we can see that a little bit cleaner. So in, in just uh, you know, a matter of a minute or two, you can create update 3D models of your old legacy 2D drawings of your other. All right, so let's jump back uh, to the slides here. So now that we've uh, briefly covered, you know, in general what synchronous technology is and, and what it brings you, let's let's get into uh, and to more detail on the four main parts of synchronous. So the steering wheel, design intent, phase relationships, and dimensions. So first is the steering wheel. Now, in your default installation media for Solid Edge, notice here I'm showing the, uh, the path. So here's a DVD, uh, the Solid Edge folder. There is a qrc.pdf file in there. Again, this isn't, uh, you know, once you've installed Solid Edge, this is, um, this is basically the, the media, like if you were going to install it. So if I open that up, notice this is a, a quick reference card for uh, the steering wheel. So this is ex exactly the question uh, John, I believe, asked. So it basically explains the anatomy of the steering wheel. Now, this may look a little bit different. If you looked at Synchronous uh, many years ago, it, it looked slightly different. Uh, they've changed it over the years, of course, to make it uh, a little bit more user-friendly and whatnot. But basically, you have uh, three axes uh, that you see here. And at the end of each of those axes, you have knobs. Those knobs let you control the angles of those axes. Then you have the origin, of course. That is the, the center uh, knob at the center of the steering wheel. That lets you move the, the overall steering wheel. Then you have the torus, so the, the white uh, wheel going around. That lets you rotate faces and parts. And then the tool plane uh, in the middle, that, that solid blue uh, plane, that lets you translate, basically. Now, you'll notice, uh, and again, I, I don't want to spend too much time here on, on all the finite details, but this is a great Great reference, uh, you know, anytime um, you need you need to look back and see some tips and tricks, uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts. But overall, if you hold shift and click any of these things, that lets you change or, 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 or move the steering wheel. So it lets you change the angles and things like that. 
And if you hold control and click any of these axes, for example, that's more of a copy operation. And then at the bottom here, this uh, this gray section, you can see some more uh, you know general tips for sketching and parts, assemblies, and, and also drafts. Now on the second page of this, uh, it is two pages by the way, uh, this actually goes into more detail on the uh, design intent, which I will uh, explain a little bit later. But here you can see it kind of split up into the, the four different sections. Uh, it's just the left side, uh, and then it, it, it kind of highlights the four different uh, groups of, of commands. Okay, so uh, the second major pillar, uh, which we just looked at on that card, is that design intent. So as soon as you click a face, you'll see sort of this simplified design intent panel. This is uh, something else that's relatively new that they added just to make it a little bit more easy to, to work with your synchronous models. So this simplified design intent panel will only show you what's currently being recognized uh, on that face that you have clicked. Now you can always open up the full design intent panel, which we just saw on that quick reference card, which is down here. So all these little icons, those are all the different types of relationships and things that, that Solid Edge will recognize for you. Now the orange ones are the ones that are on. The, the, the white ones are, are the, the types that are actually turned off. So you can turn those on if, if you want to recognize one of those, for example, uh, parallel. And if you see green or red icons, uh, the green means that it's it's being active. It's it's actually working on your model. And anything that's red would be any of these that you've actually turned off. All right, so let's take a look at, at this uh, example here. So this is a actually a solid works part that I've uh, imported. Now, if I click this face and click the arrow that pops up, it's of course doing exactly what I tell it to. So there's a few different ways we, we can uh, we can control this. We can of course add a dimension, which we'll see a little bit later. Uh, but another method is to just make the selection a little bit different. So if I select both of these faces, well now I can click that axis going up and down. And you can see how very easy it is to, to control your model or your operation exactly how you want to. Now this demo is, is particularly for uh, design intent, which is one of the four main pillars again that we're on right now. So to show that if I click this hole and click the, the tool plane, so this blue plane in the middle of the steering wheel, notice it's in a, a dynamic pan or translate mode. Again, keep in mind, this is a, a quote dumb solid uh, as it would be in most other CAD programs, but notice all this design intent, that solid edge, and this uh, the synchronous model is is giving me so all these concentric faces, tangent faces. Again, notice the the simplified design intent panel here, symmetry and and concentric. But if I hit advanced, notice I I get the full panel here at the bottom. So if I turn off, for example, concentric, notice it will let me move the holes by itself. But again, there's still symmetry being recognized here. So that's again all that power that you have is being recognized for you. All right, and just to uh, show you uh, a, a, a further demo here using this part, I'm going to create an assembly of this model. And what I'm gonna do with this is actually drag in a, a motor. Uh, let's say this is a purchase motor. This actually was an inventor part that I uh, imported. So if I drag that into my model, uh, of course, it, this this green part would would be my my in-house designed and manufactured part. But since it was the first part for the assembly, I just wanted to get rid of that ground relationship and maybe ground the motor instead, which which I know would change. So to quickly assemble this, I can make this whole concentric uh, with this one, and maybe hit uh, F to flip that, and just to align the, the top faces, I can I can very quickly flip those. Now we can see a major problem here. So my purchase motor, uh, this flange here has eight or so sides, but my my green in-house design part has uh, a circle. 
So how can we change that? Well, let's see how easy it is using synchronous technology. Now again, keep in mind, we are at the assembly level. I do need to just save this assembly first. If I edit my, my in-house uh, in -house design part here, notice I can still see the rest of my assembly. And with a quick extrude command, notice I can use those other parts of my assembly to extrude. And notice I can actually choose if I want to exclude the internal loops or the holes in this case. I can extrude only the internal loops, which would be the holes. Uh, what I want, what I want in this case is, of course, I want to include those internal loops. So instantly, I can start extruding, and just choose uh, my key point for my in-house design plan. So now, in in literally seconds, I've created a perfectly matching uh, flange for my purchased motor. And just to finish that up, I of course can use flash fit, and very quickly made uh, the front face of my part, uh, my design part to the purchase motor. That's uh, again, another very quick demo just to show you the power of synchronous uh, that even applies at the assembly level. All right, so the third uh, major pillar of synchronous technology is face relationships. Now these are very analogous to what you're used to in the 2D sketch world. So your constraints or your 2D relationships that most of you are familiar with uh, that you see here actually. So the relate section, you have things like parallel, coincident, horizontal, vertical, tangent, all those traditional constraints or relationships are applicable with synchronous 3D faces as well. So let's take a look at that. Here we can see a part with uh, different faces at, at you know, varying angles and, and things like that. So again, here's my face relate group of commands where I can do something like horizontal vertical. And this works in two ways, just like the 2D version does. So if I click a face by itself, notice it's going to snap to horizontal because it, it, was, it was closer to being horizontal than vertical. And notice the other one also rec was recognized as being coplanar. But again, I always have full control over that design intent. So if I turn off coplanar, it lets me change that one by itself. Let's say I have these two cylinders and I want to make uh, them equal to each other. Well, of course, there's an equal radius command uh, for that base relationship. So I want to make this cylinder equal to that cylinder. And now, of course, that has created a hard relationship here in Pathfinder. So if I change uh, this cylinder, again, I can very quickly do that by simply clicking the cylinder, clicking the call out, and uh, changing that to, let's say, and of course, both of them change because of that hard relationship that I just created. And just to show uh, a couple more of those face relationships, let's say coplanar, I want to make uh, this face coplanar with uh, that face, and we can see it, it because it was closer to that one, it may not have uh, done exactly what I wanted to. So, of course, you always want to keep in mind your, your order of operations here. So let's maybe make uh, this face coplanar with this face. And we can see with uh, the steering wheel, uh, we can start modifying these faces. Whoops, I didn't accept that. There we go. We can see with the steering wheel, I can of course start modifying faces and that design intent will of course always be recognized uh, as needed. Okay, let's talk about the fourth pillar, uh, possibly the most important. Dimensions are still always going to be the main way we control our models, but the difference is that we have these dimensions on the 3D geometry itself. So we don't have to go digging back to the original sketches there's no rebuilding, there's no rolling back. Here we can see all these, these PMI. Again, PMI stands for Product Manufacturing Information. And a lot of these dimension commands are on multiple tabs here on the ribbon bar. So they're on your home tab, your sketching tab, and so on. Uh, but wait, uh, let, let's, uh, let's bring up a, a very important question before we get into this demo, which is how do you know if you, want, if you need or, or should use synchronous or ordered? 
So the one very important thing is it's not all or nothing. Again, keep in mind, synchronous is the, the best of both worlds. So you can actually use both synchronous and ordered features in the same model. So let's take a look at that. Here we have a, uh, a part uh, with some dimensions shown, but this is an ordered part, as you can see from Pathfinder here on the left. So if I wanted to make a change, for example, move the back face of this or, or left uh, in this view here, I would have to do some digging, right? I, I could click the protrusion, let's uh, edit the profile. Okay, so this is the right feature uh, that I need to be mod. So <clears throat> I change the 75 uh, millimeter dimension here, let's say to 100. Well, that actually moved the front face. So let me control Z to undo that. If I modify the 40, well, maybe I can already notice this relationship here. So let me delete that because I was going to tie that down. Um, if I move the 40 now to, let's say, 60. Well, again, it moved the right side, which is not what I wanted. So what I need to do is, uh, is unlock that 40 dimension, lock this 35 dimension. And now when I move uh, the 75 millimeter uh, dimension, it does what I, what I wanted finally. So I can uh, hit the green check to accept that change in the sketch, and of course it rebuilds. Uh, I have to accept that, and we have a problem. Uh, we can see the cutout here on the left is, uh, you know, the extent wasn't defined properly. So now I have to come in and, and edit that. So edit the, the feature there. We'll edit the extent step, and we'll have it maybe just go uh, all the way through, and again rebuild that. So as you can see, there, there's with, with the traditional ordered approach, there's always going to be a lot of uh, pre-planning that was required on the initial design. And then when you need to make changes, there's a lot of digging. You know, you need to figure out how this was designed, what the original designer was thinking and his process, and if he built any design intent into the model. So let's take a look at, uh, at a different approach, the, the synchronous approach for that. If you right click on any ordered feature, notice there's a move to synchronous. And actually, let me uh, undo a few times just to go back to the original. If you uh, move to synchronous, notice all those features instantly uh, get transitioned to synchronous. Now, keep in mind, uh, features that are synchronous uh, do not care about the original sketches. Now, just to show you, those sketches did come over, but they do not control my model whatsoever. I can even delete these sketches if I wanted to. So just keep that in mind. Once I have synchronous features, once I have a 3D model, I work with that. So if I want to make changes, well, I can turn on uh, my dimensions or simply use the steering wheel, which will lift that. So if I click my back face, I can actually click the arrow and simply move that back uh, exactly what I need. Let's say 20. Uh, let's look at uh, some other changes. If I wanted to make uh, the center section uh, higher than, than, the, than the other two, well, I can, again, click that face, click the arrow, and notice, again, this is that design intent that Solid Edge is picking up for me. So it's picking up on symmetry. I can toggle that off. Uh, well, there's still actually coplanar now showed up in my design intent uh, panel. I turn off coplanar as well. Well, now I, it, it lets me do exactly what I want instantly. Keep in mind, in, in order, just think about how, you know, how long it would have taken to do something like this. You would have needed to create a new feature, basically, and, and then a lot of, uh, a lot more uh, steps, of course. Now, let's say even uh, the width of these. So if I click any of these faces, notice all the respective dimensions pop up for that. So if I click this 35, well, I have full control over which side I want to move. I can move both sides symmetrically. I can move the left side of that dimension, or I can move uh, the right side. Notice as I do that, uh, just keep in mind I had turned symmetry off uh, on the last operation. So if I just toggle that back on, notice symmetry moves both sides for me. So again, this is all that built-in design intent that Solid Edge is recognizing for me. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's put it all together now. So we've seen a, a few demos on, on the four main pillars of, of synchronous technology. So the steering wheel, the design intent, face relationships, and dimensions.
So again, this is a uh, an imported part here. As you can see, it's a part copy or a dumb solid. So let's uh, very quickly, we're running a little bit over time here. Uh, but let's say I, I click this face and, and, and pull it up. Well, we can see it's only moving that face. And just to show you, the reason is because it's not exactly centered right now. So if I turn on the coordinate system, we can see the part isn't centered. But I can very quickly place the steering wheel on the midpoint of one of these edges and center this, uh, this part. Now, when I move this face, notice it's going to move uh, the top and bottom. Well, it actually didn't move uh, these angled faces. So let's see how, how we can fix that. Well, if I click this face, I can move the steering wheel to the, uh, that bottom edge and rotate that face. And of course, design intent is picking up on both sides for me. So I can control exactly how far I want to move it. So I can pick up on this key point and get it back to be flush. Well, let me actually undo that because there's a much easier way. When I initially extrude uh, or extend these faces, notice in my command bar, there's two additional options. So right now it's on extend trim. If I switch to tip, it's actually going to angle the connected faces. So that's exactly what I uh, probably want in this case. And the last option just to show you lift is going to literally just pull it up or down. Three completely different results for a single uh, face, uh, face operation, face move operation. But lastly, just to wrap up with this one, uh, again, this is a dumb solid, but I can recognize patterns. So if I, uh, let's say, fence select uh, the faces, whoops, uh, the four or uh, three faces in this uh, cutout, notice it instantly recognizes that as a rectangular pattern that gets added to my Pathfinder now. I can recognize even a circular pattern. So if I click, uh, if I fence select the uh, faces on one of these uh, teeth, uh, of this uh, gear here, it recognizes that as a pattern. Again, that gets added to my Pathfinder. So that is a smart pattern feature with uh, 10 instances, and it even knows that two or three of those instances are, um, are suppressed. All right, and let's wrap up uh, with the last demo. Uh, this is an assembly. Let's say we want to uh, widen this, uh, this pulley here. So if I edit this part, Again, we're going into this uh, ordered part, as you can see. So if I want to make a design change, I, of course, have to do some digging. Uh, it's it's going to, of course, break a lot of features. So what I'm going to do is actually just move it to synchronous right away so that I can make these changes uh, much, much quicker. All right, so what I can do is actually uh, fence, uh, or actually using control, is select the four faces that I want to move. And here we can see uh, Design Intent is picking up on all that uh, intelligence for me and moving it exactly how I want to move. All right, so let's close and return to get back to the uh, model here. And we can see there's a big problem, right? Of course, we have to update uh, the rest of this model. Let's turn off this pulley just to, to work with this. Again, at the assembly level, I can work with uh, synchronous faces. So what I can do is select uh, the uh, one of these faces. Again, I don't have to select the top one because synchronous and uh, design intent is going to recognize that for me. So again, I'm just um, quickly selecting the faces that I want to move here, and let's not forget the uh, the face on this part. I can start dragging all four or five of these parts instantly. Notice this is, again, at the assembly level. So you can see, again, the power of synchronous here, being able to modify multiple parts at the same time. So in seconds, I've, I've successfully increased the, the, the gap here on all these parts to accommodate my, my wider pulley here. All right, so to, uh, to wrap it up here, Again, we've seen that synchronous and solid edge gives you the steering wheel, design intent, face relationships, and dimensions. And all those four different aspects help you design faster. It helps you reuse models efficiently and make revisions uh, very, very quickly. Hey, Dan. We actually yes. have a few questions that have been piling up here. 
Um, so Calvin wants to know, uh, he said it could wait until the end. He said they, they have a few years of drawings created using the ordered style. So what are the pitfalls of transitioning from ordered to synchronous? So it, it really would only come down to your, your designers. It, it's really up to them. I mean, your, your models, you can certainly keep all your, uh, your old models in order. Um, you know, as you bring on new engineers, um, you know, if, if, if you'd like to try uh, synchronous, uh, you can certainly do so. Um, that, you know, that, that will definitely just depend on, on what you at, at your specific company, you know, how you, how you guys would like to, to go about doing that. But, but, but like I showed here on, on this short webinar, it's not all or nothing. So you don't have to, you know, completely transition, you know, you don't, it's not zero, right? You can have models using both features, uh, both synchronous and ordered features. Um, so yeah, it's, it's sorry for the kind of roundabout answer, but yeah, I guess it just really does, really just depends. And that's something we can help them kind of transition with too, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, okay. yeah. Um, another question is, can um, can you please place a link to the steering wheel PDF on the page of the recorded webinar? So do we have a link to that PDF so that we can send it out to everyone? Yes, absolutely, we okay. can do that. Okay. So, uh, John, I think y your idea was good. So I think what we'll do is after we've finished recording and we send the recording out to everyone, we'll include the link to that PDF for everyone. Um, so we had one more question from Ismet. He said, is there any, is there a way where you can see relationships in solids between circles? See relationships in solid between circles. And if you need more clarification, I, he, you know, maybe we'll have him email you afterwards. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can look at that offline. But it's on. Um, if I let me go back to Solid Edge really quickly, um, and, and feel free to type in uh, a mm -hmm. little bit more information if you'd like. But um, you know, with cylinders, yeah, I mean, you certainly have uh, relationships that you can apply. So here we can see that equal radius relationship that applied uh, to those two cylinders. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's exactly what you mean, but yeah, any any of these face relationships that you create, they they do get added to your to your Pathfinder here. And I'm sending him a little message with your uh, email address in case he needs more info. Okay, uh, great. Okay, and then one more question: um, is, Are there any cases where synchronous is not recommended? That's a great question, and, and and you know, Solid Edge and Synchronous is now in its tenth iteration, obviously uh, SD10, um, and and it's it's obviously gotten uh, better and better every year, every release. There's there's more and more features and capabilities to it. Um, so, for example, something that that Synchronous uh, didn't apply to was maybe patterns, you know, but but patterns nowadays, you know, work great uh, in Synchronous, um, and nowadays. Only thing uh, that you uh, that you still want to do in ordered are uh, surfacing. So if you have you know any ergonomic shapes, industrial styling type parts, uh, so surfacing you you, you still want to do in ordered. Um, and not that, that's not to say that you can't do it in synchronous. Just uh, just the fact that in ordered it's uh, you have more control on being able to edit them after the fact. But you can certainly you know do all uh, as surfacing as you want in synchronous. And then the other thing is, I would say maybe lofts and sweeps. Um, so that's kind of in that same realm of, of surfacing where you know you're you're probably going to be making a lot of uh, his you know history based type changes. Um, so yeah, surfacing, loft sweeps. Those are those are really the only uh, situations that that you still want to do in order. Synchronous is is great for just about everything else. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And we went a little longer today. That does happen sometimes when we have extra questions, and we always appreciate your participation in these sessions. Uh, thanks again, Dan. Great job today. Uh, our next session, so like I said, we meet twice a month. Our next session is going to be on May 3rd, usually the first and third Thursday of the month, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we are going to be focusing on FEMAP next month. Um, so if you're curious about uh, about FEMAP or FEA, please, you know, just reach out to us and um, and let us know if there's any topics or anything that you'd like to hear about. 
but on May 3rd, we're going to be learning actually with Dan Rubio again about linear contact analysis. It will be simplified a tad. Um, so make sure you uh, go ahead and register for that. You can just go to uh, our website and click on events and you can just register uh, for that. And if you can't attend, that's okay. We're going to go ahead and send out the recording to you, even if you've registered and you're not able to attend. And we'll be posting this session today to the YouTube channel. Um, so make sure you check it out there. Um, make sure you pass it along to your colleagues as well. Um, and if you're ready to take your, your skills to the next level, we do, um, we do offer training uh, here at Ceratech. We also have engineering services um, to just kind of address any demands and engineering demands that you may have. We have a our services team is just booming right now. So if there's anything that you all need help with, please reach out. And I'm sure that that, um, you know, we can always fulfill those requests. We also have additive manufacturing. I'm not sure if um, if you all are into using 3D printers, but it's been a, a really busy year with 3D printers this year. We work with Mark Forged HP. And then we also have a third um, new partner, which is Big Wrap. And again, thank you for attending. If you don't mind, just stick around for about 30 seconds after the session. Let us know how we did. There's a just very, very quick uh, survey. Um, let us know how we did today, what we could do better in the future. We always appreciate your, your feedback. Um, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.